On today's Whiteboard Wednesday, I want to talk to you guys about SI joint dysfunction. First of all, what is the SI joint? I'm going to show you on my spine model here. SI joint stands for sacroiliac joint. It is where the sacrum, which is this piece of your spine here below your lumbar spine, and your ilium, which is part of your hip, come together. So this joint right in through here is your sacroiliac joint or your SI joint. What this joint does is it functions to help stabilize your body and it acts as a shock absorber across your pelvis while you're walking and as you're moving. And it helps reduce the strain on your lower back and your spine. The different types of SI joint dysfunction, there can be a rotation in your pelvis, one side, can be anteriorly rotated, or it can also be posteriorly rotated. There's also hypomobility, which means the joint is not moving as well as it should, and the joint kind of feels like it gets stuck. So if you're trying to take a step or you're trying to walk, it's not moving the way that it should, and it's gonna cause a lot of sharp pain. There's also hypermobility, which means the ligaments that are around the joint are too loose. So the joint is moving too much and you're getting too much movement um, and that's going to cause a lot of pain. You're getting excessive movement and that's going to put a lot of stress not only on the joint itself but on the surrounding muscles because they're working harder to try to stabilize you. Some of the symptoms that are really common with SI joint dysfunction, lower back pain, um, pinpointed pain. So right at that joint right in your lower back you can feel kind of two bony prominences. Those are called your PSISs. Um, right there, that pinpointed pain is very common with SI joint dysfunction. Um, hip pain, pain through your glutes and your buttock area is very common with the muscles that are trying to overwork to stabilize you if the joint isn't functioning. Groin pain is also very common with SI joint dysfunction. If there is a rotation in the pelvis, sometimes you're rotated anteriorly on one side. That's going to put a lot more pressure on the groin area. Um, pelvic pain also with that um, more pain in through the lower abdominal area, your pelvic area, um, your hip flexors can become irritated. Um, if you have a posterior rotation, you'll tend to be more irritated in the back of the hip. Um, muscle spasms in your glutes and your piriformis are very common with that. Um, a feeling of instability on one side is very common with SI joint dysfunction. The side that is affected can feel like when you're walking, you just feel like something is kind of off. Um, sometimes you can also get, with that first couple of steps, a really sharp pain, and that's very common with hypomobility when the joint isn't moving as well as it should. Um, the joint's stuck, so when you try to take that step, the joint isn't moving the way that it should, so that's going to cause a lot of pain. You can also get the illusion of a leg length discrepancy. When you have a rotation in your pelvis, it's going to give the illusion that one leg is longer than the other, even though structurally they're the same length. The causes of SI joint dysfunction, there can be a mechanical issue, there might be some kind of underlying bony changes happening, some arthritis in the joint, um, there can be bone spurring that happens over time. Um, as we age, our joints aren't as um, lubricated as they might be when we're younger, so they won't move and slide and glide as well as they would um, normally. Muscular imbalances, when you have some muscles that are stronger than the other ones, some that are weaker than the other ones, the weaker ones aren't really doing their job, so the stronger ones are going to take over and do too much. Any kind of repetitive movements with one leg or posturing. Um, I know I used to be a stomach sleeper and sleep with one leg kind of up this way. That can cause a rotation in your pelvis over time. Um, sitting crisscross applesauce all the time or even just sitting with one leg crossed over the other. Any kind of unilateral or uneven movement like that and postures over time can definitely lead to SI joint dysfunction. Um, sitting, I know I used to sit on the couch all the time with both my legs just kind of flopped over to the side and that's why I had SI joint dysfunction because I was always sitting on that same side. Um, getting in and out of the car the wrong way uh, stepping off of a curb the wrong way can really kind of jolt you out of alignment. Another very common cause of SI joint dysfunction is hypermobility um, when your ligaments are too lax. So your ligaments are very loose. Um, it's very common in women, especially during pregnancy. Um, everything is just kind of stretching out so you have a lot of instability in that joint. 
Um, another kind of group of people who very commonly get SI joint dysfunction are your super flexible, bendy people, um, gymnasts, people who do yoga a lot, your dancers, anybody who is hypermobile um, very commonly gets SI joint dysfunction. Let's talk about some of the impacts that SI joint dysfunction can have on you. Um, it's very common to have sleep disturbances, you're not able to get comfortable at night due to the pain, um, you're unable to sit for prolonged periods of time which can affect you not only at work or when you're sitting in class in school, but also just sitting at home, had a long day, trying to you know relax and lounge on the couch, watching TV, can't get comfortable, you can't sit um, for a prolonged period of time. Any kind of pain with transitional movements is really common. So going from a sitting position to a standing position is very common. Getting in and out of the car can be very painful. Even something as simple as rolling over and getting out of bed and taking those first few steps in the morning. Some signs of SI joint dysfunction that you might see um, when you're sitting, having a tendency to always shift your weight onto one side off of the side that's affecting you. Um, that's very common because obviously if you're having pain on one side, you don't want to put your weight through it. Um, sitting to standing transition, pain during that transition is very common. Um, using your hands to kind of help you stand up, it's very common if you're going upstairs or stepping up onto a curb to have that really pinpointed pain right at the SI joint. One thing I want to go into is how PT can help. One thing that we do here at LSTC that's very common for treating SI joint dysfunction is called a muscle energy technique. And what that does is you use your own force of your muscles to do a pushing and pulling motion with the therapist to even out the dysfunction. That will help um, with hypo mobility if the joints aren't moving as well as they should. If you have a rotation, that will help even out the rotation and fix the dysfunction. Um, it's also very, very important to do targeted strengthening and stabilizing. So working through your abdominals, but not just the abdominals, the entire core. So that's going to include turning on those glutes, which are lazy in a lot of people, being able to really isolate your glutes, um, but also all the other hip stabilizing muscles too, which people tend to usually ignore in their regular training. Another important aspect of physical therapy that we incorporate at LSTC for SI joint dysfunction is lifting mechanics and body mechanics. It's very important to make sure that you are using proper mechanics so you're not putting extra pressure on your low back or your hip right at that joint. Um, activity specific exercises, if you play a sport, if there's some kind of um, specific type of workout that you want to get back into, we will help you get back to that as well. SI joint dysfunction is very common. If you have any of these symptoms, please give us a call at 703-450-4300 and we'll schedule an evaluation or you can click the link below.